Welcome everyone to this exciting interview segment. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Andrew Steele, star of the Lifetime movie, The Life I Can't Remember. Andrew takes on the role of Terence. Join us as we delve into Andrew's insights into his character and the challenges of him in this movie. Thank you for being here, Andrew. Thanks for having me, Desiree. It's, uh, it's great to be here. It's a pleasure. So, can you tell us a little bit about your character in uh, The Life I Can't Remember? Sure. Yeah, Terence is, uh, is, a, is a great great character. He's a very uh, well-rounded um, uh, character. So I don't know if, if, if you guys don't know the basic story of it is that it's based around a woman that wakes up in a hospital bed and she can't remember anything. And her husband, who's a doctor, is telling her everything about her life and their life together. So it's kind of a process of her getting to re-know her husband and to, you know, see that what the relationship is because for her, that guy's a stranger. Now, my character, Terrence, um, is a friend of Dean, who's her husband. And, um, you know, my, my job really is to um, kind of see if if she might remember, like, you know, if I come with my girlfriend and they might remember the friendship that we've had so that she can start feeling better and remembering things about her life. So, um, yeah, Terence is he's a, he's, a, he's, he's a flawed character, but I feel like we all are, and that's um, yeah, that that that's a little bit about Terence. Great. And what initially attracted you to your role in this movie? Sure. Well, initially, what attracted me to the project itself was the script was fantastic. The production company Hybrid is is a great production company and Amy Barrett was the, is the director who was uh, really, really great and I wanted to work with her. Also, the cast of Morgan Bradley, um, I've seen her stuff and I knew she was great and I'd love to work with her. So that's kind of more the project, what, what's interested me about the project. But as I mentioned, the script was really great. So that's the first place uh, as an actor that you, you want to find something that you can kind of sink your teeth into. And it did definitely keep me guessing. Um, it's not necessarily what you think it might be from the outset, which I think is always really great as a viewer to watch. So those are the kind of movies that I like to play. Um, with regards to Terrence, um, yeah, as, as I mentioned, he's a very laid um, and flawed character and, I think, um, you know, there are certain things at play for him that get uh, really, you know, that you see kind of further through the movie where he um, he might put aside um, uh, some of, the, you know, his pride, but also um, his morals uh, uh, could be a little uh, askew and you're not quite sure where he's coming from. So it was an interesting dynamic with all these different kind of facets of the character to come and uh, portray for the film. Amazing. And what do you think makes this movie so special and captivating? Well, as I said, the script is really great and it does keep you guessing. Uh, there's a bunch of different turns and certain sides of characters uh, that you may perceive to be uh, how it is, is not necessarily how it plays out. Although when you kind of sit back and watch the movie as a whole, you can understand everyone's um, perception and why they did certain things. Um, but, you know, it's just a captivating watch. Like, as I said, it's, it's thrilling. Um, it's mysterious. Uh, you're constantly guessing what's going to happen. And uh, that's a sign of a great film, I think. Great. And uh, what do you hope audiences will take away from watching this movie? I think uh, I hope audiences take away the importance of um, love and security and safety and that, that safety net that you have with a family and loved ones. Um, also, it, the importance of trusting your instincts. And if sometimes if you feel like something's not quite right, Often you're right, and whether you can put your finger on it or not, um, but trust your instincts, listen to people around you and make your own judgment calls and whether they have your best interests at heart. So, yeah, but I just hope that they have a fun ride because that's exactly what this is. Strap yourself in and uh, it's, a, it's a bumpy ride with, with plenty of bends and twists and turns. And uh, I just hope they enjoy the film. 
Amazing. And uh, what was it like working with the rest of the cast and crew on tap? Yeah, look, the cast and crew were were amazing. I think the um it was just it was fun from day one. Um, you know, the, the film itself is quite dark inherently. Um, but there was a lot of light and long, uh, uh, upbeat kind of positive smiles and jokes and, you know, a couple of little pranks along the way. Um, but yeah, it was a really great professional set. We, it, we, we shot it really quickly. Um, so, you know, one or two takes for each kind of little setup, but that's great to kind of keep it fresh and flowing. But from the day that I arrived there, I knew it was going to be a good set just because everything was very well organized um, and as I mentioned, the, you know, production company really knew what they were doing. So it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, very smooth running, uh, operation. Amazing. And, uh, what can you tease about your character journey? What can I tease? Um, it, it just, yeah, there's, there's certain, there's certain sides, uh, of Terrence, um, what he presents, he presents something different to kind of everybody, which is one of the reasons why I was drawn to the character because that's a fun thing to play. And I do feel like we all have our own sides. You have a, you know, the the you that you are with your parents is different to the you that you are with your partner or, or to somebody stranger on the street or someone else that you're trying to get something out of. And that's another thing that, you know, is inherently human is is to manipulate. And uh, again, what I think is great about this script is there's a bunch of different manipulations and you're never really sure whether somebody has uh, your best interests at heart. And, uh, and sometimes they do, but you just can't see it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all I can tease, I think. That's amazing. So the last question about this movie, what was your favorite scene or moment while filming uh, The Life I Can't Remember? I think if I was to pick a scene, I think it was the, the first time that you see Terrence. That scene or that day that we shot, there was, there was four of the actors there. It was, uh, it was Morgan, uh, Gabriel and Melanie and myself. And so that was that felt quite communal. And it was not only was I welcomed as an actor to the set from the whole, the whole crew, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of dynamics. And, you know, it was the first, well, I was really figuring out my character. You do all your homework and you go, you come, you come to set thinking, I know what it's going to be like. But then when you meet the other actors and the characters they're bringing to the screen, you, uh, then you quickly realize, oh, this, this relationship that I've worked out in my bedroom doesn't quite fit or, or it does. And this is how we're working. And because it's, you're working so fast with it. Um, it was, uh, that was, yeah, very exciting because there are lots of different moving parts. Um, so, yeah, those opening scenes where I'm coming in with, you know, a relationship with my girlfriend and then a friend and an old friend who can't remember the given circumstances, um, uh, can't remember her life to this point. So, uh, yeah, as an actor, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun dealing with all those scenarios kind of in the one scene. So that would be my favourite scene. Great. So change of subject, what have been some of the most memorable projects you have worked on throughout your career and why for you? Great. Um, I think one of my favourite films and will always be dear, dear to my heart is a film called Wish Man, which is the true story of the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, so it's, it's set in Prescott, Arizona. He's a motorcycle cop in the 80s. Um, so he had that kind of, uh, a bit of a draw that, that accent to it. Um, but that was a, it was a beautiful film. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, it was the, 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 the true story of the founder of Make-A-Wish. Um, and, uh, I don't think I mentioned that, but yeah, so that's his life story and it, it goes through what his life was like going from, um, you know, uh, not having, anything uh he was abandoned uh effectively by his mother uh, in a, at an early age and then rose through trials and tribulations through alcoholism and um and a bunch of flaws that he had 
to create an amazing thing like the Make a Wish Foundation, which, as you probably know, um, it's this worldwide um, foundation that helps grant sick kids wishes, like going to Disneyland or you know whatever they might think that they'd love to do. And there's actually there's actually um, one wish every I think it's thirty minutes is is granted around the world. There's been over half a million wishes, and it all started from someone uh, you know giving back and you know a simple act of kindness causing a ripple effect which is beautiful. So that was, that was very successful. We were on Netflix for, you know, uh, a couple of years and we were in consideration for best picture at the 2020 Oscars. I was in consideration for best actor at the 2020 Oscars. Um, but working with the other actors like Tom Sizemore, Bruce Davis and Danny Trejo, my now wife, Kim Jackson, Kirby Bliss Blanton, um, some really great Robert Pine was in it. Stephen Michael Quesada, Dale Dickey, the list goes on. Um, yeah, it was that was probably my first lead as in a US feature, and to have those incredible actors opposite me, um, I learned a lot, and uh, and yeah, that's something that I'll always always remember. Amazing. So at the Red shows, we are big fans of Christmas rom coms. What is your all time favorite? The old ones, the one you saw every year with your family. Yeah, okay. Um, I think the old time, the one that coming, is coming to mind right now is Love Actually. Um, and I actually just recently watched Bridget Jones again, and that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, something that has has the heart and the the depth of, of the script and the characters and the budgets and all that kind of stuff. You can't go wrong with uh, with any of those. I agree. So yeah. last question. Yes. Can you tease something about your next project? Yeah, I've got I've got a few projects that have been they're in post at the moment. Um, so one of them that's very dear to my heart, um, I uh, I produced um, and starred in. It's called Other You. It's set in a world where you can travel to a parallel universe and trade places with the other Desiree. Um, <laughs> and so who knows? You know, you might be an astronaut in another world, and so you guys trade places for the week and. Uh, and they might have uh, cataclysmic circumstances and uh, repercussions for both universes. So that's something that's um, that'll be coming out in 2025. Um, also, I just shot a film called Playing for Mozart, which is uh, a romance film um, about loss and love, alcoholism, and uh, you know, and and being kind to yourself and opening yourself up to fall back in love. Um, so that's beautiful. We shot that just uh, a few weeks ago um, in Kentucky. So that was really great. Another production that was very slick and uh, the people that put that together um, really knew what they were doing. So that was a, that was a wonderful time on set. Um, and there is one other film I just, oh, yeah, so, so Lick, um, this is a film um, based on Amy Scott's book called Lick, and um, and Tosca Musk is the producer of that uh, Passion Flicks project. Um, that was really great. So it's kind of the basic story. There is a 21 year old goes to Vegas to celebrate her 21st birthday. Uh, she has a big night. She wakes up, can't remember anything, but she does find out that she's married to a rock star. That's what happened in that one big night. So uh, that's another fun one that's coming out. I think that's coming out in December or maybe Valentine's Day next year. So keep an eye out. There's things yeah. happening. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, that's what I can tease for what's coming up. Interesting. We will cut up with the, all of these uh, projects. Yeah, so please do. So this is it. Cool. And, uh, make sure to go to the Life I Can't Remember on Sunday night on Lifetime Channel. And thank you, Andrew, to join us today. You're most welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I look forward to the next time. It's a pleasure, and uh, I'm looking forward to it too. So Excellent. And thank you so much all for watching. Bye. Fantastic. Ciao.